Hello and welcome to Art Block, the show where we talk about art and how it's made. I'm your host, Spirit, and today we're going to be uh, doing a little something different. So today I've decided to open up some of my old portfolios from my junior and senior year of high school. I've got two big portfolios of artwork that we're going to be looking through today. And I just want to show you guys kind of what I was making at the time and just give you a little bit of background. So I've been drawing for about six years now. And at this point, these drawings are going to be about two to three years old at this point. So consider this kind of a way for you to see where I was back in my high school art career and where I am now to see what I've learned and maybe where you can move on for the future. So we're gonna go ahead and start. I've got this big portfolio here. This is one of the nice ones that has the proper zipper on it. Uh, this one doesn't have, I don't think this one has too many canvases in it. It's pretty heavy though, so we'll go ahead and take a look to see what's inside. Oh boy, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff in here. This, this looks like a mixture of a lot of years. I don't think this is just senior and junior year. Let's go ahead. Let's grab the first thing. I think it's caught on something. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, yeah, no one's gonna recognize what this is. Does anyone recognize this at all? Cause uh, I sure do. So a little bit of backstory. So some of you may have seen my project Beta 9, which is currently being worked on behind the scenes. And this was one of the first concept arts I made back, I believe, do I have a date on this one? I do not. So I believe if I remember correctly, this was made back in 2017, back when I first had the ideas for the project. And it's gone under a lot of changes in design, as you can see. Like back in the day, they had <laughs> basically Iron Man ripoff armor, and a few of the design elements still stay the same, such as the Under Armour, but yeah, th this is the reason why we practice people. And then underneath this, this is just a practice. This was a background practice I was working on. As you can see, it was half finished at the time. My idea, I think, originally for it was going to be to have one, like a daylight version on the top and a nighttime version on the bottom. I really like the sense of duality that comes with a top and bottom aspect, like you've seen it in some of my other artwork. But never got finished. I do like how it is. Um, could definitely use to work on the mountains there, but I'd say that definitely, I think this was 2017. I'd say for 2017, me, this wasn't too bad. So let's go ahead and take a look to see what else we have. So a thing to know about prints, and I think I've got the carved glass here, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but the way that this works is you take linoleum or some sort of plexiglass and you scratch into it and it'll create these little indentations. And the way that this works is that you will roll bits of ink across it and then scrape it, and then you will press it against cotton paper like this. And the cotton paper will take the impressions. So um, let's see what we've got. So these were definitely, these were a series of prints. So um, this was definitely, this is definitely on the newer side, but I think Judging by the shape of the head, I'm gonna say about 2016. But at the time I was really starting to get a grasp of like if I really hold it up to the camera there, getting a grasp of detail and cross hatching and just generally understanding how to go a bit more in depth. So this is also the point where I was really starting to understand how hands work. Like this other one here, if I can get it to focus, you can see that it's not quite as good as the other one, but I was definitely starting to get a better understanding of how hands work. This one, I believe, this was the second run, which I think came before the other one, which had the other blue on it. But this one I think was my favorite because it had swirls on it at the time. So I did the other runs first before adding the swirls to the plate because I realized I had way too much negative space. Now for those who don't know what negative space is, so you have positive space, which is the character, and as you can see, I'm already getting stuff all over my arms. But you have 
the character, which is positive space, and then negative space, which is the blank space around it. So I had to fill it with something, so I decided to add clouds to it. So, something, definitely something I look back fondly. If you ever go to art school or ever take art classes, this is actually a really fun project. I remember having a lot of fun with it. But let's go ahead and see, there's a little bit more to this little pile. Oh boy, yep, we have some old, old, old sketches. Um, oh, and I know what this is. So this was one of the original concepts I had for Spirit. So originally she was going to be kind of a dragon spirit rather than just a deer or a, she's currently a demon actually. But this, cur this, like, this version right here was meant to be very ethereal, like aether-like. And I believe there was a colored version at some point, but I don't know where the file went. But you can see like over time, especially like my understanding eyes have gotten a lot smaller and more realistic. Nostrils are not just a random oval in the middle of the face. And I have a better habit of not constantly doing side profiles. Now I do everything three quarters. So we've got a few more things. Ooh, uh, this one. I'm gonna be coming back to this one later, but this was the thumbnail sketch to a big painting I did back in the day. That, I believe, was 2016, and I have it uploaded to my DeviantArt, so if I can't find it in the portfolio, I'll definitely put it up on screen. But this was one of my favorite acrylic pieces I did at the time because I put so much time into the detail and trying to make it look all pretty and stylistic because I was very inspired by general Hispanic artwork, like if you ever go to a restaurant or you see like paintings on the wall, they'll be very beautiful and shapely and have a lot of symbolism to them. So we'll get back to this one later, but for the time being, it's gonna go in the file. And let's see, what do we have here? Oh boy, we have a lot of stuff. So this was just a old, old, old concept sketch of one of the original drafts of my book, Echo, which is still in progress as we're recording this. And this was meant to be a hidden city, which you can see the updated version on my DeviantArt. I've had a lot of changes with it, but at the time I had no idea how any form of perspective worked. So I ended up doing it, basically just fudging it and hoping for the best. So. It did provide an interesting kind of base concept. I did reference off of it, like I have a scan of it, but at the same time, like the designs and the story have changed so much at this point that it's just not, it's not the same as it used to be, but it served its purpose and was a good form of growth for me. So study your perspective, kids. Uh, and what do we have? Oh, do you guys know who this is? So this is the predecessor to what is currently Chibi Hell, which is my webcomic that I occasionally post on Twitter. Um, Chibi Hell originally started off, it was going to be a series called Two More Minutes, which plays off of the factor that I cannot stop working. I am such a workaholic. So this was supposed to be a little character. I think she, she never had an official name at this stage, but this was back when my hair was way different. Like, my hair's style has changed over the years, but as you can see, it's very kind of Jaden Animations Domix ripoff-esque with a nose, so it was definitely an interesting predecessor, but not really something maintainable, especially considering, like, I don't draw this way at all anymore. Like, this is not, especially with this, this is not how you do a grump face. This is how you do a grump face. Right, let's see what else we've got in here. This looks like we've got a lot of stuff in here, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to cover all of it. Let's go through what else is in this portfolio before I actually look into the wallet portfolio. Oh, yep, we're getting some colorful stuff. All right, so this one is definitely interesting. So this was I believe around the end of my junior year. As you can see, the anatomy is very, very rough. And I was never the best at watercolors. I always found that they had, I had so much difficulty controlling watercolor when it came to actually making fully colored pieces. So you can see, this is incredibly sloppy. Like if you can do better than this, you are definitely on your way. Like just, what is going on with this gazelle's face? It's so messy and like, 
bleeding everywhere. I was incredibly insistent upon drawing from fabrication rather than drawing from life. And as you can see, it really bit me in the butt. So if you're ever doing artwork, especially in your earlier stages, try your best to replicate what you see before fabricating because learning to draw what you see is so important, especially when it comes to anatomy, shading, color, just anything when it comes to art. You so need to practice this, especially in your earlier years, because I learned the hard way. Don't make my mistake and wait until you're older because this is definitely not college portfolio material, at least for the schools that I was going to. Some of you may have remembered this, but in my senior year, I took AP art and I decided, so there's a part of your senior, like your AP portfolio that you have to do where you do a concentration project where you focus on one particular thing. Now, I somewhat misinterpreted the project because I thought it was meant to be more focused on storytelling, especially given that I was going into animation. So the thing was, is that I decided to do a storybook with blending card and Copic marker. And the problem was is that the Copic markers we had were incredibly old. So they were drying out and the only ones that worked were the ones that colored the dog. So I had to focus, like I had to do the backgrounds with watercolor and watercolor and blending card do not mix. So if you're ever using Copic markers, please either <laughs> have enough marker ink to cover the background or color the characters and put them in the computer. Just don't mix watercolor with Copic markers. It is not meant to be. Like you can see how crinkly this is from sitting like just, I can't believe that I even passed the class considering I was just so incredibly dumb. Like if I could take what I learned and pass it on to you guys, just like every single bit I would but there's just so much to talk about in so little time. And this was around the time I had no idea how to draw people either at this time. Like I've gotten better about it, but like, look at, <laughs> I'm not saying that it's bad to be at that spot because you have like the whole road of improvement ahead of you. But especially for me, like I was incredibly insistent upon being stylistic at the time which seriously bit me in the butt when it came to like college applications and everything. So like if you're at this level, it's okay. It's there's nothing wrong with being at this level or even like below this level because you have so much improvement. Like you have so many opportunities for improvement. So just keep working on it and seek out ways of improvement rather than just getting locked into stylistic stuff like I did. Let's see, what do we have underneath here? Oh boy, more Beta 9 artwork. Uh, this was a little bit more of a bridge point between the current ones and the previous iterations. So this was back when the dark armor was still a thing, but the design of the armor was taking a completely different angle. So this was meant to be a black and white only, so I never intended to do any sort of coloration, which is why it looks he looks so washed out and it's just messy and rushed. Like, granted at the time, I didn't have any blending medium or anything to help me like give myself more time. So I was like, oh, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. But at the same time, like, especially when it comes to acrylic and painting detail, take your time with it if you can. Like, don't rush anything if you have the availability because what I would do is I would always take my assignment work, which this, I don't believe this was an assignment, but I think I might've turned it in for my portfolio, but I would take my assignment work and I would rush it so I could get it done so that I could just go draw like original characters and stuff. But the thing was, is that assignment work and portfolio based stuff is so important to your improvement because it causes you to try things outside of your comfort zone and really like expand your horizons. So work especially hard, like put all your time into assignments first and then do what you want because bonus time is for fun time. But doing those assignments is so incredibly important to your improvement. Um, this is a typography piece. Not much to say about it other than the pastels are really messy. 
and probably in need of sealing. I don't know if I ever seal this. Always seal your pastels with sealant because otherwise it will make a mess of your portfolio. This one, this one was a um, melted crayon project. So what you do is you put this on a hot plate and then let it heat up and then you run crayons across it. So this was supposed to be kind of a desert made out of audio waves. As you can see, it's got a lot of different colors, a lot of like variety. It's actually one of my more favorite pieces, even though it's not, <laughs> it's not super great, but I enjoyed making it because especially working with the melted crayons was just so much fun. And it's got, it's got a very soothing texture. It's kind of messy though. So um, always, always experiment. Like you'd be surprised what you can do with like $5 cheap art supplies. Oh, you know what? Let's bring this out. Cause this is very old. This is freshman year of high school. And this is my very first official assignment. Now, as you can see, it's very flat, very like lifeless and not very realistic when it comes to proportions. And you know what? That's okay. No one is ever going to start off being a professional with their artwork. Like I've seen everyone from all ages come to me and say, my artwork sucks because I've only been drawing for a year. Don't expect yourself to be perfect off of the first bat. You're always going to have room for improvement. I have room for improvement. Like if you just look at this now, like <laughs> if I showed this to you in public, I don't think you'd believe it's my art because my art has changed so much over the years. So just don't be afraid to take that first step because it's always the first step to a long, long path of improvement, but it's so worth it. All right, so for this next part, I've decided to pull out everything. So I have this other portfolio here that was actually resting inside of this portfolio. So this looks like a lot of senior work by the way that I can tell. So this is going to have a lot of acrylic work and I'm not entirely sure what's been in here because it's been a couple of years since I've actually touched this like stuff. So let's see, oh. <laughs> This one was a Bob Ross inspired one. So this is acrylic on recycled canvas. So if you look really closely, you can see textures of previous works on there. But this is a really old piece, at least in regards of, it has a sense of age to it in the sense that I haven't seen it in so long. So what I did was, this is actually one that I spent so much time on, especially blending the sky. Like whenever you're painting, always start light to dark when you're doing backgrounds and then dark to light when you're shading. So I started with the sky and it just kept getting darker and darker. And I had to adjust the background for it because of that. So I will say one thing that I do really like about this piece is the fact that it's very warm colored, like if I kind of, hold it against the light. Like it's definitely easier to see with the light. It doesn't have a whole lot of detail, but I definitely do remember this being, I believe fall of 2017. So this was around the time where I was really starting to dip my toes into painting backgrounds, which I'm horrible at backgrounds still, but this is kind of like a good first step at really getting into painting, which it's so therapeutic to paint. And then let's see, what else do we have? Um, oh, I remember this. This was actually going to be in an art block episode. So this was way back in season one when I was trying to do a video on artwork on a budget. And I had gone to Michael's and I had gotten a set of like kitty pastels, which I still have in my drawers. And these, this was basically meant to be a test to see if I can make good artwork with cheap art supplies. And so, I'm not entirely sure what it's meant to be. I think I mostly started off with the blue wolf and then just had to add the background. But I guess if anything, like, it's not too bad. I, you can definitely tell that I used like a heat gun to blend it together and it's been sealed. So like my hands are covered in like gross charcoal and everything like that. But this, for oil pastels, like I never really use them in school, but I'd say for something that was early art block, this could have definitely been something that made its appearance. So maybe I'll do that in the future. You guys let me know. And then let's see, we've got, oh, this was definitely one of the assignments. So this assignment was to choose words from an old dictionary page and create an illustration to match that. 
So my idea was to take, it's called fascinating, um, fascinating and fashionable, but also fatal. So this one was meant to be kind of like a banshee who haunts a fashion scene. And you can tell like by her long arms and her general like creepy demeanor, she's, there's something not right about her. So whenever you're making art, definitely try working with new material. Like if you have an old book that you're willing to spare pages of, creating artwork and paintings on book pages is actually incredible to have the text in the background. It's definitely something that takes a lot of practice. Like as you can see on the edges, the edges are actually burnt. And that's because I took a heat gun to the side to create that really burnt old texture to it. So definitely something I would try just don't use the heat gun or any sort of hot glue gun if you're like a kid. This one was actually the concept art for the frog that was going to appear in my concentration. So here he had a lot more detail and general texture to him. And that was because I had a lot more time to focus on him. So this is around the time when I was really starting to get a feel for Copic markers. And you can definitely tell I over blended on some parts, but Copic markers in general, I like them because they have a good sense of control to them. I can see exactly where it's going and exactly how it's gonna blend. Granted, there are some bleeding problems if you have like different kinds of paper, but especially with blending card, you are set if you have Copic markers. So they're also just so very colorful. If you can afford them or even some off brands, I'd definitely give them a try. If not, whatever class you're taking will probably have them available if you want to borrow them. Just use them with care because they are expensive materials. Now this one is definitely on the older side. So this was one of many failed attempts at creating Pokemon prints. So this is a traditional version of a Mewtwo print I made back way back in October of 2017, and I painted it with metallic paint. So one thing to know about metallic paint is it's really good for accents, but not good for whole pieces. So he's like so incredibly shiny. I guess it kind of, it's kind of like seeing the hollow cards in a way, but at the same time, if you're doing a big piece like this, like this definitely wouldn't be something that I hang in my gallery, mostly just because the anatomy kind of sucks and the texturing and everything like that is very sloppy. But in general, if you have the opportunity, use metallics and pearl paints as a form of accent because they can really bring some life to a piece. Oh, you know what? This is, this is one of my duality pieces that I made back in the day. So this was kind of one of the preliminaries to that is that I made this with the intention that you could hang it either way, up or down, and it would be, like, it would work. And initially I was going to have it facing this way, so if you guys remember the first, like, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse cutscene, that it was when Miles jumps off the roof and starts diving down to the city. I was going to have like buildings and everything here at the bottom, but I just didn't have time to finish it. But I don't know if you guys actually recognize the silhouette of this character, but this was actually back in the day when I was making the first official designs of Kevin, back before he had color, back before he even like had the fledged out Back in the day, way before he had any sort of fleshed out characterization other than just rowdy teens, so. And something interesting about this piece is that it actually involved laser cutting technology. So the way that I did it was I created a sketch. So basically the silhouette was a proper sketch, which I don't have anymore. But what I did was I scanned in the sketch and put it into Adobe Illustrator. And the way that I did it was I traced around the edges of the sketch in Adobe Illustrator and I converted it to a vector file to be used for laser cutting. And the way that laser cutting works is that it takes little lines of red and it'll cut around the edges and then it'll give you a perfect stencil. So it's incredibly accurate, especially if you have the upper tier printers. So this one, this one was relatively simple. I didn't have to do any engraving or anything like that. But this one in particular, like especially with the little details of the hair, what I did was I first 
add, I did the inside of the character first. Like, as you can see, it wouldn't be quite the same if it didn't have the blue and red dynamic on the inside of the character. But what I did is after that, I let it dry and then I matched up the fuzzy, like, white paint part to the original one. So I put the cutout portion on top and then I added a glow because otherwise it wouldn't really stand out. And this is one thing that I actually really like about working with hybrid and technology work is that you have a lot of opportunities to really get extra levels of accuracy, which is why I really like digital art is it can be very accurate and clean, but when you combine it with traditional art, you have a lot of opportunities. Like this is incredibly simple, but I think definitely back in the day, this is one of the things I'm proud of. So I think I'm actually gonna hang this up so I can look at it because it's definitely one of my favorite pieces back in the day. And that's about it for today's show. So a little something different from my usual shtick, but I figured it would be good to experiment and see what works. So if you guys did like what I made today, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and share this video around. I'm stuck in a rut right now with YouTube's algorithm and I could really use the help right now. So if you did like this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and follow me on my other pages. I'm Spirit, and I'll see you next time.